the incidence of oral cancer is rising every year by about 1% a year annually. And most other cancers are decreasing year over year. So um, for some particular reason, it's going up and it's going up, especially in the young and healthy population. So screening early and screening every year is really important for the same reasons that we take bite wing x-rays so that you can see decay as early as possible. We don't have to wait for it to develop into a big painful problem that we can now see with our eyes. We wanna have that same kind of tissue screening. So if there's a change, we catch it as quick as possible. Most doctors are not really looking in your mouth unless you complain that something hurts. And even then they're still typically just gonna refer you to a dentist and hope that you follow through with that. Um, so, you know, going to your doctor every year and getting that screening is, is beneficial, especially if you have a family history of HPV, um, any other kind of cancer, if you drink or smoke, all of those risk factors put you at higher risk for oral cancer. You know, get them to look at this kind of screening in the same lens that they look at screening for, you know, cervical cancer or breast exams. The beauty of this kind of screening is that the light is so foolproof that either doctor or hygienist can use it. You look through the lens, any kind of inflammation or tissue abnormalities are gonna present as dark. And if something is a temporary trauma, you simply push on it, you can push out that inflammation. If you can push out the inflammation, it's temporary, no harm, no foul. If it's something that is potentially cancerous, you're not gonna be able to push that darkness out. So that initial screening can be done by doctor or hygienist. It takes less than two minutes. I mean, integration is easy. As soon as you start looking at it as just as important as doing bite wing x-rays every year to look for decay, we, you, when you walk into the room and do your normal little pitch about, you know, here's what we're doing today. We're gonna do your bite wing x-rays. We're gonna do fluoride and we're gonna, you're due for your oral cancer screening today. And just add that in to what the patient is due for annually and make it part of you know, the normal once a year time kinds of screenings and treatments that you would provide. And you'll be surprised that most patients just say, yeah, okay, I wanna do that. And if they don't know what it is or it's new, they'll of course ask you and you just tell them we're doing a tissue screening and the same reason that we use you know, the x-rays to see your teeth and see changes in the dentin and the enamel, we wanna see those kinds of changes in your tissue as quickly as possible as well. It is um, a one-time investment. And if you're charging an average of, you know, 35 to $75 of screening, the light typically pays for itself within the first couple of weeks. It's a really great added value for the practice because not a lot of people are using it yet, unfortunately. So if you can highlight that you have this kind of adjunctive screening and you can highlight the connection between HPV and oral cancer, smoking oral cancer, drinking oral cancer, um, and draw in some of those patients that maybe hadn't thought about getting that kind of a screening, it's a good um, marketing tool and just value proposition for the practice as a whole too. There is an insurance code they can use. Um, it's D0431. They can submit to the insurance. You know, coverage, just like anything else, really just depends on the policy and the employer and if they've decided to cover that code. But um, even if it's not covered, you know, for less than $100 relative to what you would pay for other kind of screenings, that's minimal. You know, again, mammograms, pap smears, prostate exams are in the hundreds of dollars. So you could offer this screening for, you know, $30 to $80 uh, per visit and or per year and still have that revenue, but also make it, you know, much less expensive, you know, relative to the other kinds of cancer screenings that a lot of our patients are getting with their regular doctor. Yes, there's definitely an extra layer of protection for providers to have this kind of light. Um, if you are offering an adjunctive screening for cancer and your patient declines it and you have them sign that declination form, then you have that documented. The patient chose not to do the screening. So even if, you know, five or 10 years down the road, they end up finding out that they unfortunately have oral cancer, um, they, they won't be able to go back to that practice and say, why didn't you tell me about this? Because they chose to decline that treatment. And Yeah, there's a big trend in dentistry to move towards prevention and early detection all the way around. There's a lot of great technologies coming out on the market that are much more prevention and wellness based rather than reactive, oh, there's a problem, how do we fix it? So having this kind of early detection device is definitely going to put you in the forefront um, in the DSL and the private practice space. It's 
it's becoming um, a really popular tool that people are coming to us and asking, you know, I, I just heard this lecture, the statistics on oral cancer are horrifying. We've got to do more than just wait until we can physically feel and see a lesion developing and um, we want to know what's out there. So it's a really easy thing to do to just, you know, keep you at the top of your game and make sure that your patients are being provided the highest level of care possible. We offer online training, we can do in-person regional trainings, and really it only takes about 20 or 30 minutes for them to understand the light, understand how it works, understand what to say, when to say it, and what to do when you see something. All of that can be done in about 20 minutes, and most patients um, are receptive to it, and most you know clinicians know that their patients are gonna be receptive to this kind of you know potentially life-saving technology. So recently a hygienist shared with me that he had this particular patient that had been told he had an amalgam tattoo. And that's just what everyone assumed, you know, those things can stain, no big deal. Well, they got their Visalite and the hygienist said the second he turned that light on, looked at that amalgam tattoo through the light, he could just tell it was way too deep to be, you know, a surface level stain. And they sent him to the oral surgeon and the oral surgeon called and said, you saved his life. We were able to remove that the same day you know you hear stories like that and it just gives you chills and makes you realize how impactful such a simple technology can be to your patients